Hello and welcome to another Red9 demo. Thanks for watching. We've been doing an awful lot of um, updates in Red9 Pro recently. You've probably seen some of the feeds coming through Twitter, etc. And I wanted to go through some of those and also just give you an insight on what's going on um, in the great grander scheme of things with the sales. So, Pro Pack updates. Obviously, we've got an awful lot going through. Uh, there's a new release just come out yesterday. Pro Pack itself is having some bigger changes. We've done a new version for 2022 to support Python 3. That's available. It's not yet available through the update system, so if you need to check it out, please uh, let us know. The other thing is that we've got a new website, which is probably a couple of weeks away from uh, going live. The idea with that is that it allows you to subscribe to ProPack, so rather than contacting us and us invoicing you and it being an annual thing, etc., which kind of occludes some of the freelancers and smaller studios, you can now literally do it all through the website, your account, you go onto the account site um, and you subscribe and it gives you, you know, the ability to manage your own licenses. So quite a lot going on. What I want to go through today is the rig manager, some of the updates that we've gone to that. While we're on it, don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel, have a look on Twitter, we're on there as well as Red9 Anim. Plenty of fee going on. So the rig manager. Some of the updates that we've been doing recently, you'll have seen me go on about um, BPOs and T-poses, and I wanted to go through what that is as a just as a, uh, a quick update, really. So, the rig manager is in ProPack. It's down here, rig manager, which is this thing here. And what we're going to be talking about are these things here. Now then, skeletons in games are king. So if we change your skeleton halfway through production, the repercussions of that are tremendous. Um, we've had clients very recently actually, who have had to change the prop joint. They've reoriented the prop joints and to actually track that through production is really hard work. And it's also quite dangerous because you can have assets where you may think you've done the change and you're a bit iffy as to whether you have or not, you put it into production. The animators animate with it. Three months down the line, you realize that all the guns are rotated wrongly because that prop joint didn't actually go through to production. And all of a sudden you've got to backtrack this huge backlog of work. So to have the ability to go in and actually verify that that skeleton is exactly as it should be is really important. And we call them BMT poses. Now that they have an internal use for Red9 for the exporters, the B pose is used by the exporter to reset the skeleton. It's one of these things that we allow you to do additive exports. So for example, if we have a run and we just want to export the gun, the arms for the gun rather than the rest of the skeleton, you can actually do that but we have to have the ability to reset the rest of the skeleton so that we just have the arms you know, moving. And that's through this pose system. We don't use skinning. We could look at skin cluster and find the joints, but things like props aren't skin, so you can't reset them. So it has to be another block of data, hence the B pose. Now then this guy hasn't got anything on him at the moment. We can see that because if we select the root skeleton, there's no attributes down here. So let's save the B pose out, save there. The difference, by the way, between the B pose and T pose, the B pose is the bind pose. The T pose we use for HIK. So we use that as your T pose for HIK itself. It doesn't currently actually allow you to make the T pose by default. Um, and we also don't have an auto way of loading it, but the HIK data is actually stored inside this data. In the next release, what we'll probably have is one down here that actually is T-Pose and rebuild HIK definitions. We've got the data, we have the pose. It's not a huge amount of code to then just you know join those last few dots up and be able to do that. So anyway, let's have a look what this gives you the ability to do. First off, I'm gonna put him in T-Pose. I've already got a HIK definition in there. I'm just gonna go stance. I'm gonna turn that back off just so we can carry on manipulating the skeleton. And I'm gonna save that as T-Pose. Now, if we select the root object and we come back to the attributes, you'll see we've now got two big, long strings. These are Python dictionaries that are pickled out onto this string attribute and managed through metadata. Really easy to get to if you needed to uh, bust that data open. And what I can now do is I can load the B pose and I can load the T pose. And those are the internal poses that we're gonna be dealing with for the rest of this character. What I can also do, which is really good, is I can save that out to file. I've got a B pose and T pose already saved here, so I'm not gonna bother. But these are our sanity, effectively. When we build a character, we always save a B pose and T pose from the initial delivery of the character. And we check and verify against that for every future delivery to make sure that skeletons don't move. Let's give you an example. Let's say this character has come in and the outsource artist or whoever it is has 
accidentally put a joint orrit on there, or they've got a skeleton where that joint orrit happens to be and they didn't know about the change. You wouldn't. It's impossible to look at that skeleton and go, ah, that's in the wrong place, unless you really knew what you're looking for. But what we can do here is I can compare. Now then, um, the three sections here are quite important. Where it says Atta, this is dealing with the attribute that's on this character. So that's this attribute here. That's the BPOs that we stored onto the character himself. So all of these will load that character, load that attribute, save it, delete it, or compare the current pose to that attribute, or compare a file to this attribute, or update this attribute from file. That's what these are all doing. So that's the T-pose block and the B-pose block. The skeleton doesn't know about the attributes. This stuff here is just pure pose stuff. So this is when you're saving it out to pose and loading it back in from pose because we don't know whether it's a B pose or T pose. You might want to have a different pose. It might be the idle stance alert pose or you know, etc. So these are kind of irrelevant to, to the actual poses themselves. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a compare. I'm going to compare the current pose of this character, knowing that that prop joint is wrong against the internal attribute that we've got. Hang on a second. Let me just reload this because I've just changed this code. So I'm going to compare it against the internal attributes. So we'll go compare to current pose. And it says it's wrong. It says something's wrong. So if we look down here, it'll actually tell me here, error, attribute, mismatch, left prop, joint orient, current value is zero, expected 30. Actually, these two returns are the wrong way around. This is just a printout error in our, uh, in our logic. I've got to change that. But if we look at that, the joint is 30, it's telling me it should be zero when I've switched these two prints around. And we know there's something wrong in the skeleton. The main thing is it tells you there is something wrong in the skeleton. If I do that again, compared to pose, there's something wrong. Pose mismatch, that flags automatically that this skeleton is different and that we need to look into it and what's going wrong with it. I can compare it to file. Now that again, the difference between these two, this one shouldn't raise an error. So if we do that one, uh, actually, hang on a second, I'm doing this wrong. Compared to current pose, compared to current pose, compared to file. Okay, let's do that one, compared to file. This one doesn't raise an error. Now, why is it not raise an error? Well, the reason for it is because this is comparing the attribute, that bind pose attribute to the file. The bind pose attribute is stored, the file is stored, it compares the two. We didn't actually change the thing. We changed the pose, but we didn't change the internal bind pose. Okay, so let's just go through that again. That one here, compare to file, is comparing the state of this long attribute here to the file that we stored out to file. And those two are the same. That actually internal B pose is the same. It's just that we've moved the character. So that's the difference it's worth knowing about. We might put another warning in there because it is a little bit misleading, but that's why these two are here. Um, what we can do is if I load the pose, you'll find that it doesn't actually reset that. So the loads, all of these loads, only deal with transform data except this one. So this is a new one that's gone in to actually load and load joint orients. So you can verify it with these and if you really, really need to, you can go load and we can go selected or loaded. Um, this stuff instantly, if I just cancel that, go away. If I select the root joint of the skeleton, the one that we've got this data on and I hit any of these, you won't get any extra flags come up. If I select a singular object that isn't the root of the skeleton and I do any of these loads, you'll get this one to say, do you want to load it to selected objects or just the, um, the entire skeleton? So what I'm going to do is I will load just that prop with the orants from file. So I'll go load, selected. Uh, you've chosen to load. Yeah, this, this is more a, a, a warning. Um, and it's a warning because joint orants, you don't really mess around with unless you know you've got to. So I'm going to get say continue. B pose, yes. You'll see that joint orient, or joint orient has now popped back to where it should be. If I compare it to the current pose again, poses are the same. So by doing the debugs, we've identified that the prop has changed in the delivery. We fixed it and we've checked it and we've verified that all that data is correct. Now then the other thing that we might need to do is that we might have, um, for example, this is a, an SRC file. So this is the character source file. This is skeleton and um, skinny deformation. But we have also got rig files and the rig file obviously is under rig control and you can't easily get it back to a T pose or a bind pose because the rig is active and you've got to know about turning evaluation of solvers off, etc. So what it's easier to do is to come into this, save the bind pose off as a file load the rig file up, select the skeleton root, and go actually update from file. And what it'll do is it'll push the data from the file into this BPOS attribute itself, and then the exporter, that's what it will then use. So you, you kind of, 
bypassing the, the, the fact that you have to put them in TPOs to actually update the TPOs. Um, hopefully that makes sense. But that's what this one, these are all for. So the, the, there is slight difference in these ones because we do have save load, load rotates and load all. Load rotates will just load the rotates. It's kind of useful because sometimes if you've moved joints around or um, you've reposed it or, you know, the arm's got to go slightly longer and we've actually legitimately kind of done that on the character, but you don't want to have it snap back. Being able to just load rotates is actually quite useful to be able to put it back into the bind pose or the T pose. So again, really, really useful things. One other thing that we've put in, which is quite handy, let me just delete that file and we'll load up a rig file that's locked out, uh, pub, and we'll duplicate the skeleton. Um, this is something that happens many, many times. You'll get a, you'll get a rig from a character, from, a, from an artist or from um, an outsourcer, and they'll have locked it in all sorts of strange, fancy ways. There are so many ways of hiding something in there, it's ridiculous. You know, um, in this case, I think we do, I can't remember what we do to lock this up. And this is the problem. There's lots of different ways. Oh, we turn the LOD visibility off. But it might be that we've come in and we've also gone into the drawer overrides and we've enabled those and we've turned things off or we've made them a bounding box or we've gone into templates. You know, there's so many different ways of saying hide this object in there. And, and to actually make it invisible. So there is also here this nuance come in, reset visible uh, drawer overrides. That basically obviously selected or complete, complete, and that resets the status of everything. So it turns all the overrides back to default status. It turns all the selectability back to default status. And it's a really useful way of just saying, I need to debug the skeleton and, and not go through all these individuals and write bits of code for, you know, for joint in joint, turn this on, etc. It's just a really useful little extra function that's gone in there. Um, we did say about the export, I'm just going to go for one final thing, just so you can see the reason for the importance of the bind pose in our export pipeline. If we come into this character, he's got an animation, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, it's the usual walk, sit one, quite boring. Uh, let's open the exporter up. We'll select uh, any of these, that one will do. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it specific joints. So I'm going to say, I only want, uh, we'll go to multi-mode actually, I only want those two arms set, save. Uh, in the UI, you get this extra block that tells you what joints we are. But what this means is that I only want to export the arm data and I want to reset the rest of this character. So basically I want the character to be in T-pose um, at world or it, but just with the arms taking the data. And this is what happens because this is where the bind pose. I'm going to go into debug just so it does it, but doesn't actually export the data. And lo and behold, we've got export errors. Where we've got export errors, what have I done? Uh, da, 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 da. Blend target is because I've rebuilt the systems and I've not reloaded it. Let's try again. If this bails again, just take it as read that this thing works. Remap times, that one, yes. Run. There it goes, okay. So here it goes. So this is the result of the bind pose. What we've done is we've taken a character, we've taken the joints from whatever pose he happens to be, we've whacked it back to bind pose because it has the bind pose attribute and we've only connected the joints that we wanted to connect. So we can output custom. So that's why it's really important. It's also used by this exporter here. So we've got two different export pipes and we're gonna go through those soon. Um, hopefully I haven't waffled on too long and that makes sense. Just to summarize, B pose, really, really vital. Um, being able to check skeletons, being able to verify stuff before you put it into the pipeline is so crucial um, and so useful. It's really easy to code up as well. This, there's a whole API about this. Uh, if I open the rig manager API up now, bang, open it up. Um, gosh, this looks really weird. I'm in 4K on the other monitor, so everything's scaled up. Everything is in, everything is in this utils manager class here. You can see them all here. Excuse the fact that this is huge. Like I say, the other monitor is 4K, this one's 2K. Okay, I think I've waffled on enough. Thanks very much for watching. Like I say, um, subscribe to the YouTube channel, contact us if you need a Pi 3 build, and watch this space for the new website and the new subscription mechanism. Thanks very much. Goodbye.